Heaven's Own is a rescue dedicated to saving 250 to 300 dogs a year. We started about 17 years ago on a mission to save cats from death, high field shelters, abuse, neglect, mistreated situations. Started with my wife 17 years ago. She was uh, sick, very sick at the time. God spoke to her and told her that she was going to start giving back or giving up either one. She decided she was going to start giving back. So she called me and told us what we'd be doing. And so that's how it started 17 years ago. When the person falls in love with the dog or the dog falls in love with the person, that's a good marriage to me. Uh, specifically, I do anything from filling water buckets to feeding dogs to doing paperwork to making phone calls. My mission here varies from day to day. It depends on what needs to be done. The hardest part, I think, of running the rescue is the sadness that goes along with it because you can't save every dog. Even though I want to, I go to these shelters and the faces haunt me. I never forget a face. And when I go to the shelters, I can't take everybody. And it's, it's heartbreaking to know that you can't save everyone. Currently we have anything from border collie mixes to hound mixes to Boston Terrier mixes. We even have Ari, who's my, my big baby. He's a husky and a lab mix. Our volunteer process is parents fill out a waiver. The volunteers come and we have anywhere from 3 to 15 every Saturday. My favorite part of working at the rescue is at the end of the day, after we walk the dogs to clean water buckets, we get to play with the adorable puppies. They got new ones every week. When I volunteer at the rescue, we usually wash the beds, play with the puppies, clean out the water bowls and the food bowls, and we help scoop out the kennels. We walk big, fluffy dogs. My favorite part about volunteering is definitely seeing people come in and adopt the dogs. I think that's really cool. It's nice to see the dogs come and go because we know that they're going to get great homes. So just the fact that we're helping uh, clean up and just make the place a better place and see people happy to be here, it's, it's great. <laughs> I can't really think of any improvements this neighborhood should have. I mean, it's it's relatively safe, you know. Your kids can be outside whenever they want. Um, the houses are very fine. The uh, water is clean. Really, there's nothing I can say that needs to be improved. It's a very safe neighborhood. And you have the great southern hospitality here. Like, everyone just knows each other. It's a small little southern town. That's the best part. Well, since last time I was interviewed, I've actually acquired myself a new house. Um, it has all the amenities I can need, you know, it's got food in the pantry, um, it's got running water that's clean, and the pool in the backyard is quite excellent. So we're about to actually go on a tour of my new house, so uh, let's come see. Real excited about this. So, uh, here we go. You can't be in here! Go! <laughs> I do enjoy going swimming there and everything because the water is just gorgeous. I would highly recommend having kids in this neighborhood. You have um, a couple local community groups. I think they call themselves the Go-Go or something. But uh, they actually, they accept the kids and stuff. They have all these fun activities planned out for them. It's great. The kids are never going to be bored. There's always something for them to do. My name is PJ Papadopoulos and I live in Champion Forest. My family was brutally murdered by the Go-Go gang. I, I really don't know how to describe them. They're just whoa, savages. The gangs have gotten substantially worse. They're merciless, they're ruthless, they're these brutal killers. And it seems like nothing we do can stop them. Bruh, I'm the top dog in the go-go game, bruh. Bruh.
bro. We out there hustling, bro. We, bro. I wouldn't say that the neighborhood has evolved. I think, I think it's devolved. It seems like Lucifer has infiltrated our community. My only main concern about this neighborhood is there's this man who keeps breaking into my house. I think he's challenged. Either that or he's homeless. It's more of a minor concern. It's not very, you know, major, but there is a little bit of a human trafficking problem here. Uh, a lot of prostitution. So that does have me a little worried, but I'm not too concerned. Well, I've had some hardships in my life, so I became a man at night. I mean, at least it pays the bills. I don't recommend living in this neighborhood. Not with the go-go gang. Oh, of course. I have to recommend living in this neighborhood. It is honestly, you're not going to get much better. As I said before, you got the southern hospitality, great construction and quality houses here. It doesn't get better. I mean, you can make some pretty decent money through some unconventional methods. Bruh, bruh. If y'all not your own trust, you bruh, bruh. Five years? Um... I'd hope to think that I'm still in this really nice house I acquired and I'm absolutely in love with it, you know, it just, as I said before, it's just beautiful, well-made, tons of amenities, everything a man can need. Where do I see myself in five years? Well, with the way the community is looking, I think I'll be dead in five years. There's been a huge amount of growth in Waxhaw and in Union County in general. Lots of new developments, lots of new neighborhoods, lots of new businesses. Union County is definitely experiencing some urban sprawl. We seem to have a lack of understanding of the need for keeping some of the vegetative buffers in the vegetation to prevent erosion and prevent flooding and things like that. So when we see new developments go up, what we're seeing is trees and forests just being completely knocked down without regard to trying to keep some of that buffer in place. And that also adds to the impact on the water resources. Waxhaw is growing. This isn't you know, some small town out in the country anymore. I get a lot of questions and concerns from citizens and other people who live in the area. Primarily it consists of traffic, people are concerned with traffic, that's always a concern. Some people feel like we need to slow it down or we need to stop and you know, preserve Waxhaw how it is. Areas once just natural areas now becoming shopping areas or developments, especially developments, there's a lot of that. Lots more impermeable surfaces that then leads more to flooding. Lots and lots of changes that have taken place and it seems like there are more to come. Traffic's changed dramatically. Uh, we moved here in late 2008 and at that time it was significant. Charlotte was still a growing area. You know, with growth comes a lot of issues, a lot of headaches, you know, growing pains, but I think overall it's a, it's a good thing. I'd like to see them slow down a bit. Construction in the area has been going so quickly again. I, I just think that uh, it's tough for the area planners to keep up with the infrastructure. It just seems the schools can't be built quickly enough. The people that I talk to seem to not really 
be that big of a fan of the amount of development that's happening, but I also don't know of anybody that's going to town meetings or speaking up and trying to make a change or have their voice heard. favorite movie I would have to say is The Lord of the Rings, uh, Fellowship of the Rings, the first of the trilogy. When it came out, it, was, it wasn't like any movie that had come out before it. Just a, an amazing combination of live action and CGI. Oh uh, gosh, um, my favorite movie is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Never have I like been so eager and willing to watch a movie over and over. And not only that, but every time I see it, I like leave it feeling differently, thinking differently about the movie and myself. So what makes a film a classic film? A film that dares to be different? A film that stands out among the rest? The film has continuously astounded me, but as of recently, I have noticed an increasing amount of movies stand in a group of habitual routine. Nowadays, there are more movies with similar themes like the Taken Trilogy, The Equalizer, and the first John Wick, for example. They all share the theme of a hitman coming out of retirement for revenge. The films don't stray from ordinary, instead they stick to the cliché action flick stereotypes of this decade. Yeah, I don't know the reasoning behind remaking a bunch of classic movies lately. Ghostbusters. What was up with that? It seems like a scheme only to revamp previously thought ideas in ways they couldn't do it then. Like. The quality of entertainment, I think, is, is just at a whole nother level. The bar is set higher, I think, than it's ever been before. And people expect a lot when they go to movies. And that's the problem, what the people want. This brings a genre of film called blockbusters. Lately, blockbusters have been sequels, remakes, or superhero movies. Sequels would be alright if they were made to close or strengthen their previous works, but instead they seem out of place and forced. For example, the Fast and Furious movies. It seems as if today's blockbusters are all made for profit. Where's the heart and care in these films? Now that Quentin Tarantino has announced his retirement, and after seeing Spielberg's last creation, the BFG, we are left with few classic directors. Martin Scorsese is getting too old, and who knows how long Christopher Nolan will be here. I'd say about maybe two out of every 12 times I go to the movies, it's like a good original movie I've seen. North Carolina is an incredibly beautiful state and it deserves our honor and respect. But littering is a big problem and it is only getting worse. I think people litter because it's convenient. Oops. Why do I think people litter? they can't find the trash can. I think people litter because they're too lazy to go to a trash can and help the environment. If you drive locally around any highway, you will see litter. Bottles, cans, food wrappers, plastic bags, and more. If you look closer, you'll see thousands of cigarette butts on the ground. Garbage in yards and overflowing trash bins are common, and people just walk right by and ignore it. I tell somebody who's littering, um, I'd probably explain to them that, hey, you know, you're hurting your planet. It's, it's not good for the environment. You could be hurting so many animals. Just tell them to hold it. You know, just put it in a trash can. They find one. Go home. I'd say that they need to pick up their gosh darn trash and they need to go to the trash can right over there and stop littering. We need to get serious about not trashing our treasure. People may think litter is a victimless crime, but it impacts people's safety, security, and well-being. Last year, the North Carolina Department of Transportation spent more than $15 million to remove approximately 7.5 million pounds of roadside litter. I think the majority of litter just comes from anywhere. Just random people. They just, they litter all the time because it's convenient. Like, they could be on the road and they have to throw out the apple that they have half eaten. So they just throw it out their window, chuck it out their window, boom. Or they'll chuck a soda can out their window. Or not just people driving, just people on their walks. They don't want to hold their trash, so they're just like, oh, I'll drop it off here in the scutter or this 
patch of grass. They don't think care about it. There are many things you can do to combat the growing litter problem. Cuthbertson High School in Waxhaw, North Carolina has an environmental club whose purpose is to create and run a working recycling program. The club sponsor is history teacher Benjamin Smith. We have our weekly recycle pickup for the school. We go around to this, uh, all the halls in the school and we pick up the recycling bins for the teachers and we uh, move that into the larger roller bins which are then placed out behind the school for weekly pickup. We also have participated in Earth Day Awareness over the last two years as well as our monthly cleanups along Newtown Road where we have a section of the road where we clean up uh, litter that's um, been deposited along the road. NCDOT's Adopt a Highway is another opportunity to get involved. Adopt a Highway is uh, a whole thing where a family or a person can adopt the highway. You basically get to say, this highway is mine, and in return, you get to clean up all the trash on that highway, take care of it, and make sure that no one pollutes that area of the highway that is your highway. It's your baby. About 85% of all littering is the result of individual choices. So by educating people and changing behaviors, we can help prevent waste and litter from cluttering our roads, our communities, and our environment.